I want your soul. Amanda was standing in the darkness, beating her fists against the refrigerator door. The commotion had wrenched me out of a deep and dreamless sleep. When I'd crept down the hall to investigate, I had panic thoughts of intruders storming into the house to gut my family. But when I made it to the kitchen, I found only my wife standing in her nightgown, looking somewhat like an apparition, banging in a steady rhythm upon a hapless appliance. I nudged the dimmer switch up in the hopes of shedding even just a little light on the situation. It didn't work. I still didn't understand what was going on. What's wrong? I asked. You don't hear that? That fucking buzz. I listened. It was more of a hum than a buzz, I thought, and a very gentle one at that. One you wouldn't notice unless you were paying attention. That's how it always sounds, I said. No, it's not. It's broken. You don't hear that? It's loud, and I can't sleep, and it's keeping me up, she said. I nudged the switch a little higher, and now I could see that Amanda wasn't kidding around. She looked positively haggard, and in the light, even more like a ghost than she had in the dark. It sounds normal, I said again. And that right there is what I was really afraid of. Amanda closed her eyes and spread a hand out across her face, gripping her temples with her thumb and middle finger. It's in my head. What? You hear a buzzing sound in your head? I bit my lip. Do you think that... Yes, yes, yes I do. I picked something up on my trip. God knows what it could be. I took all of my vaccines. Well, those don't always work all the time. So it would seem, she said. I was groggy and wanted to go back to bed. Well, we'll figure it out in the morning, honey. We'll get you right to the doctor, first thing. For now, why don't you just go lay down and try to get some sleep? I can't. Take an Ambien. It'll help. I've already had three. It sounds like a fucking beehive in there. It won't shut up. I took a look up at the clock, working four hours. Honey, have you had Tylenol? Have you tried Tylenol? I've been awake all night. I've tried Tylenol, yes. I've tried reading the Bible, too. And before you ask, I've tried everything, and it won't stop. Okay, all right, relax. Should we go to the ER? We can wake the kids up and go to the ER right now, or I'll call an ambulance, 911. But Amanda just shook her head. Just go back to bed, Walt. I'll be okay. Just go back to bed, and on your way out, turn that light off. And so I did just that. A few hours later, with the sun creeping into the sky, I shut up the alarm clock and looked over to see that Amanda had made it back to bed. I found her soon enough, though, sitting on the kitchen floor. She had pulled the refrigerator away from the wall and unplugged it. She looked wild and unhealthy, less the ghost now and more the decomposing corpse. Honey, it won't stop, Walt. It'll never stop. I made you some coffee. The buzzing still, I asked, pulling a mug out of the cabinet and pouring myself a cup. Like a swarm of bees, she said. No, more like a swarm of angry wasps. You didn't go to sleep last night, did you, huh? Nope, never did. All right, I'm calling off work and I'm taking you to Dr. Henderson. I looked down at her. She had a blank look on her face and for a moment I could vividly see a buzzing in my own head. We'll get you all fixed up. Jacob Henderson was a friend of mine. We played poker together every Friday night and I called his personal line to find him on his way to the hospital and filled him in on my wife's condition. Amanda's got it bad, Jake. This buzzing in her head kept her up all night. We think she got it from running around in Thailand last week. Though she was up to date on her vaccines, but I can't be sure. Hmm. Well, I'll go ahead and clear a spot for her. Can you bring her in right away? Yep, yeah I can. Thank you, Jake. I then hung up and turned to Amanda. She was shivering now, her teeth audibly chattering. The sound made me shiver. He said he can fit you in first thing. I'll drop you off, bring the kids to school, and then come right back to check in on you. My wife gave no indication that she heard anything I just said. Suddenly, she leapt to her feet and took off running, out of the kitchen and down the hall. After a moment, I heard a door slam shut. I followed behind to the bathroom door and knocked. Amanda? I was answered by a terrible, throaty wretch, followed by a splash 
as of a large volume of liquid being poured out over the tile floor. Aaron came out of his room dressed in his pajamas, his hair sticking up in a colic, and asked, Was that mom? Is she okay? Your mother's feeling a little bit under the weather today, but she'll be okay. And then from the bathroom I heard another retch and another splash. I'm going to drop her off with Dr. Henderson and he'll fix her right up, but I need your help this morning, okay? I need you to go get your sister moving, and then both of you need to get ready for school. Aaron nodded and walked off to his sister's room. I tried the knob, but it was locked. You okay in there, honey? I said. Silence. Or was it? I put my ear against the door. It wasn't silence, it was buzzing. Very faint buzzing, but definitely present. Amanda? Honey, I need you to answer. Tell me that you're okay. What if she passed out? Maybe she fell and hit her head on the way down. I decided to start to pick the lock. It was a privacy lock and would be easy to open with a straightened out paper clip. I pulled my head away from the door and an instant later there was a click and Amanda slipped out of an opening that was barely big enough for her body to fit through. She closed the door behind her and kept her hand on the knob. Oh, I'm fine, honey, she said. Totally. 100% better. The buzzing's gone and I feel great. Just got a little sick. I'm thinking it was something I ate. She did look better. Tired still, but no longer on the verge of death. Well, let's have Dr. Henderson take you a look at you anyways. It's already been arranged. I made the appointment. No, she snapped. An ugly rage flashed across her face, then was gone, leaving a gentle smile in its wake. I told you, I'm feeling quite well now. I didn't want to press the matter too insistently. Taking her to the hospital would mean missing work, and when I missed work, the work didn't magically disappear, but rather piled up on my desk. I was just getting over one ulcer and wanted to avoid another, if possible. You're sure? Amanda nodded. Okay, if you're sure. I am. But could you still take the kids in today? I'm going to clean up in the bathroom and then hit the hay. I'm beat. Oh, sure, of course, honey. I nodded at the door. Let me just do my business in there and I'll be out of your hair. No, no, you can't go in there. It's embarrassing. Oh, honey, it's nothing I haven't seen before. Come on now. I'll be late. I said no. Go use the kids' bathroom. This one is a war zone and I can't let you in there. I shrugged at that and was getting ready to turn around when I heard that buzzing sound again, a little bit louder now coming from the other side of the door. What's that sound? That buzz? Amanda was silent for a beat and then let out a mechanical laugh. It didn't sound like her at all. Now you're the one hearing a buzz? Maybe you should consult with Dr. Henderson yourself after you drop off the kids at school. You probably have a case of what I had. It's not fun at all, I promise you that, she said. Something's a little bit off about her, I thought. But, I mean, she had been up all night and puked her guts out. Yeah, okay. All right, that's fine, I won't use it. I headed off to the kids' bathroom. And as soon as I was a few steps down the hall, I heard Amanda open the door again. I stopped and turned to see her disappear back inside. With the open door, the buzzing grew temporarily louder. There's something in there. It's not in my head. But then I realized Amanda had spent all night in front of the refrigerator, convinced that the noise was coming from there, even after I had borne witness to the contrary. Maybe I do have a bit of food poisoning. I put the matter out of my mind and went about my day. That afternoon... At the crest of a wave of progress against my towering workload, I got a call from my kid's school. Amanda hadn't picked them up. Normally, she picked them up. The school secretary said that she'd tried the other numbers listed before mine, but none of them had reached a human being. I was a little put out, but figured fair enough. Amanda had a rough night. It needs the rest. She's probably off in dreamland right now. I picked up Aaron and Margaret and, to their delight, took them out for ice cream. I wanted to give my wife a little extra time to sleep before I dropped the kids off with her and went back to work. But I did need to get back to it, so as soon as we got home and the kids were barreling off for the toys, I went to my bedroom, bracing myself for the unpleasant but necessary task of awakening my wife. But she wasn't in the bedroom. Amanda, I said out loud. I knew she was home because her car was in the driveway. But if she wasn't in bed, then where? And why wasn't she answering her phone? I walked throughout the house calling her name, sticking my head into each room. When I got to the hall bathroom, I was greeted by a closed door and an undeniable buzzing noise. Something was very wrong. A part of me wanted to pretend that it wasn't, and to just keep walking down the hall, out the door and into my car. Back to the office to make some more progress, make some more money, but no. 
That was my wife in there and I loved her. We'd made vows and had children together who were now playing in the living room, oblivious to any kind of danger. Though some dark and primal urge stirred by the buzzing sound was telling me to run for my life no matter the cost. Amanda had been right. It really did sound like a swarm of angry wasps. It was menacing in a way that was both organic and mechanical, which I suppose was true enough of wasps. Single-minded drones like programmed robots but alive too, and looking, finally, for nothing more than an excuse to plunge their poisonous stingers into your flesh. I knocked on the door. Amanda. I knew that she wasn't going to answer, but I hoped that she would. I hoped that she was in there perfectly okay, having just woken up from her nap, and that the buzz was from her use of some kind of electrical device. Let it be a vibrator if need be. Hell, let her be in there with the defensive line of the Dallas Cowboys. Fucking them all. Let it be anything other than the unspeakably awful thing that I knew it absolutely would be, even as I didn't know the specifics of what that nightmare would manifest itself as. I took a breath and tried the knob that I knew wouldn't turn, and it didn't. The buzzing seemed to intensify, becoming agitated by my attempts at intrusion. Now, there was no more procrastinating. I made my way through the living room where Aaron and Margaret were engaging in a mock battle between superheroes. Super freeze, cried my daughter. It didn't work, said my son. I drank some antifreeze before I got here. In the study, I rummaged through my desk drawers until I found a paper clip. I straightened it out with unsteady hands and wielded it past my playing children back to the bathroom door. Just get it over with, I thought, sticking the wire into the small hole in the knob. I wiggled it around a bit until I heard the click of the lock coming undone. I was almost grateful for the sound of my pulse thudding in my head as I pushed the door open. It temporarily drowned out the droning buzz coming from within. There, inside the bathroom, was my wife, Amanda. She was stark naked and crouched above what looked like a writhing ball of insect larvae and human shit. Some of the larger larvae were emerging from this central mass and crawling all over her, finding a suitable piece of flesh and attaching themselves there to suck out the final bit of sustenance, needed to become adults. Above her head, hanging from the ceiling, was a nest, swarmed by what did indeed look like wasps, striped black and yellow, buzzing and nasty. Amanda was twitching all over, but otherwise unmoving. Her eyes were blank and her face was slack. She was, I realized, gone. Her mind and body was overtaken by these parasitic wasps, one of them had found her, probably while she was in Thailand, and had laid its eggs inside of her. Did it do this through a sting or by crawling into her mouth while she slept? No matter the method, the insect had succeeded, and the eggs thrived in my wife's body, protected from the outside world. She gave them a free ride to America, back to our house, and then, when they were ready to hatch, she had vomited them up on the bathroom floor. There, in various stages of development, they had fed all day, either on her shit or her blood. They grew fast into adults, who now swarmed round her head and plucked the hair off her head in order to build their nest. I understood this on instinct, like how a mouse understands a cat. Come to think of it, there was a parasite for that too. Toxoplasma gondii, which thrives in cats but will settle initially for a mouse. The parasite's special talent was to make the rodent unafraid of felines, and so easy prey. The cat, without sport, would eat the oblivious mouse. Its flight function disengaged and the parasite would get what it wanted all along, to live and reproduce in the cat. Life can be a nasty business, as they say, all around. My own fear response, however, remained fully intact. And even as I took in the scene before me, as the thoughts swirled in my head, contributing to the discordant symphony in there, alongside the organic buzz and my pounding pulse, I retreated. I slammed the door behind me and braced myself against the wall in front of me, dizzy. Good God, what am I supposed to do? Amanda was clearly beyond help, it seemed. There was no way she was coming back from that. Her mind and her body had been taken over by them, in the same way that certain other species of parasitic wasps will take over the body of a spider and have it spin a protective cocoon around them, or how certain fungi will take over the minds of ants, running them into half-dead slaves under the control. Nobody quite knew how it worked, only that it did work, and it was terrifying. Those things were in there, all too rapidly growing into adults, building their nest. Amanda's body would serve them for a while, but once that source was depleted, 
They'd want to be seeking other hosts, seeping through every crack, looking for fresh meat. Maybe that would happen sooner than later. Maybe they were already searching for the exit. I turned slowly and looked at the crack under the door. In horror, I tore my shirt off and spread it out on the floor, attempting to blockade the gaping gateway between the horrible world of the bathroom and this world. In even more horror, I looked down at my naked arm to see one of them on there, crawling. I slapped at it madly until it was mush. Had it stung me? Or was that just a sting from my own slaps? Get the kids, get out of there. Then call the police or call an exterminator or burn the house down. Just get out of there, I thought. I ran into the living room and grabbed my kids roughly by their arms, dragging them along behind me. Did one of them sting me? Did it inject me with its nightmare eggs? Are there more on me? Did those sting me? Is it too late? Are they right behind me, chasing after me? As my mind screamed, my children screamed. That hurts, Dad. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? They shouted. But I didn't stop to explain. I kept running, praying that the buzz that filled my head was only the sound of nerves sizzling out. I am told that when the police arrived at the scene, my wife was already dead. After some pressing on my part, an officer disclosed that there was no writhing ball of larvae on the tile floor, nor any larvae nest attached to Amanda's body, but that there was a massive nest hanging from the ceiling with a thick swarm of adult wasps encircling it. It happens, the officer said. They'll build a nest wherever they can. He shuddered. Nasty little fuckers. Do you really think we wouldn't notice a colony of wasps building a giant nest in our bathroom, sir? How long does that normally take? Weeks? And we never noticed that? I shot at him. I was frustrated because nobody believed my story about some sort of supercharged species of parasitic wasps. Wasps that might take over the body of a ladybug. I was told, but no species exists that can take over the body of a person. And yet no other really plausible explanation for what had happened was proffered. Well, I mean, I would have expected that you would have noticed it, the officer admitted. But then again, I'm trained to observe my environment at all times. And I'm trained to notice the slightest detail out of place, but that's just me. I then tried a different approach. The nest was made out of her hair. You tested that, right? Sir, there was lots of stray hairs in the bathroom, available to anyone or anything looking for such material. I sat there in disbelief for a moment across the desk from this officer. I knew that I couldn't convince him of the truth, he'd already made up his mind. The truth lay in matters beyond his knowledge and understanding of the world, and rather than expand his understanding of the world, he had chosen to contort the truth to make it fit. And this is how the world will end, I thought. After days and nights of mourning and erratic sleep characterized by terrifying nightmares, I had little emotion to lend the thought. There was only a flicker of rage. Let me review. According to what you're telling me, a massive colony of wasps was picking up my wife's stray hairs for weeks on end and building up a huge nest in our bathroom, completely without our notice. And then one day, Amanda undresses to get in the shower, and lo and behold, she finally notices the enormous nest. The sudden sight frightens her so much that she defecates and then drops dead of a heart attack. The marks that are all over her body, an unexplained but unrelated rash of some sort. Case closed. Is that what you're telling me, officer? Is that the summary? Unfortunately, sir, that's the long and short of it. I know it's hard to hear. It seems such an undignified way to go. If it makes you feel better, I saw that nest with my own eyes, and I'm not ashamed to say that I pissed myself. There's no shame in being human. Those fuckers are scary. One of them got me in the neck while I was there. And I'll tell you what, the only thing worse than getting stung by one of those things is getting shot, which I have been as well. The officer then patted his shoulder. Right here is where it got me. You got stung. All in the line of duty, he said. I then stood up. Well, I have to thank you for your time. I needed some closure, I suppose, and now I have it. The officer then smiled. I'm very sorry about your wife, sir. The only advice that I can give you is hang in there. Life goes on. You'll see. And even now, somebody needs your attention. It's okay. You can go ahead and answer your phone now. It must be important. That damn thing's been buzzing for five minutes straight. Ah, uh, officer, it can wait. Thank you again, and good luck. My phone was in the car with the kids. I left his office and walked outside. The sky was overcast, the investigation was complete, as was the fumigation. And the kids and I were due to move back into our home. We were, in fact, on our way to do just that. But suddenly, it seemed like a good idea to go somewhere very far, far away 
from this town.